Right, well, it's five years since we went to the polls to vote in the Brexit referendum. That's right, half a decade ago, the people of Britain voted to leave the European Union. A surprise to many, but maybe not so surprising in hindsight. Uh, we're joined now by Michael Heseltine. Lord Heseltine, former Deputy Prime Minister, thank you so much for hanging on for us. Um, the, here we are, five years after that vote. You were very, very opposed to the whole idea. And, and how do you think it's turned out? I think that uh, it is a disaster for this country. It has diminished our status on the world stage. It has removed us from one of the power blocks of tomorrow's political uh, uh, arrangements. And um, it, self evidently, it's, it's created a range of domestic problems which uh, there were no easy solutions to. Um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you really want to see what you should think about Brexit, read today's Daily Telegraph. I mean, here you have one of the newspapers probably did more to colour opinion in favour of leaving the European Union. And, and there were three major articles in the paper today. One saying that Liz Trust should go for quality and not quantity. Uh, another saying that we haven't got any... Uh, up and go spirit and, and, and the, what's happened to us and another analyzing what public opinion has hardly changed um, uh, so in, in the, the, the debate is just the same as it was there were no upsides what, what have we gained absolutely nothing uh, what have we lost we've lost our position as a leading member of the European Union I don't, I mean, I, I would counter that if you don't mind, because very often Britain was a sort of antagonistic voice at the table and, and smaller countries did rely on us to protect them, I think, from some of the things that the EU wanted to put in place. But you say that our position on the world stage has diminished. As a result of Brexit, we've now got our own seat back on the World Trade Organization. We've just hosted the G7. We've got the climate conference taking place in the UK. Um, equally, you're saying about the up and go spirit. We, we can now fund and organize innovation and research without onerous EU regulations. There are some positives at basically having control over your own destiny, surely making decisions for yourself as a country. Well, the G7 was interesting, wasn't it? Because it was completely overshadowed by our relationship with our European allies. Uh, and of course, it, it had nothing to do with Brexit one way or the other because it had all been arranged a long time ago. Uh, so, it, it, but it, it, it was it was just the, the nastiness of waiting for a row to erupt, and it, of course, it did erupt, as predictably it would. Uh, a quite uh, unnecessary row, self-inflicted, because we had severed our relationships with our principal allies. Um, but I mean, I hear what you say about this new freedom, but show me a benefit of something that's been cheap, right? Uh, Liz Trust has deployed a great deal of energy, I'm the first to say it. And what's she achieving? Well, the Daily Telegraph tells us she's rolling over agreements we already had as members of the European Union. And the only the only real one that stands out as a possible uh, uh, free trade agreement that is new is Australia. And, and let's just answer this question. Why do you think it's got a 15-year implementation period? There's only one answer to that. It's because it's so damaging to British agriculture that the government can't bring it in any faster. But people would argue, wouldn't they, Lord Heseltine, that things like the common agricultural policy has been very damaging to British agriculture. The common fisheries policy has been very damaging to British fishermen. In fact, when it came to a lot of the things that the EU put in their trade deals, we didn't talk about them in newspapers. We didn't discuss the impact on Britain. We didn't discuss the downward push pressure on, on things like salaries of people in blue-collar jobs because of uh, inward migration. There have been a lot of downsides, actually, to being a member of the EU, but because we couldn't do anything about it, it. We didn't discuss those things. But surely you must be able to think of something that you would like to see happen. Now we've got independence that we can, you know, a, a decision we can take as a country for ourselves. Well, I'd like to hear you explain the benefits that are available to us. You mentioned fisheries. What I, I'm not involved in the fishing industry. All I know is that the, the fishermen think they've been betrayed. Um, because a lot of easy promises were made, which haven't been fulfilled. Um, so the fishing situation doesn't sound too good to me. 
Uh, I don't agree with you at all about the effect of the common agricultural policy. I know why, why, why there was one, and that was because the French did a deal with the Germans uh, that Germany would help subsidize French agriculture, uh, providing that Germans got access to the French market for their uh, industrial products. And why did the French want to protect their agriculture? Well, it's very simple. They have huge areas of southern France, which it's very difficult to see what else you can do with, except to support an agricultural basis. And if you let that go, people would have flooded to the towns and left massively uh, run down agricultural areas. And that was a, and, and did we join? No, we didn't. So the French and the Germans fixed it to suit them and we stayed outside. When we came to join, we had to accept their rules. Well, we've fallen into the trap, haven't we, of, of refighting the, the, the whole joining argument. I mean, yesterday, talks began to join the CPTPP. That's a nine trillion pound potential deal. And if you were minded to accept that we are now a Brexit country and that th that is our future, do you accept that we are now dealing with it and getting on and putting the deals in place that, that mean that this could actually work for us? Is that anything that close to something you might accept? No, it isn't, because it, all of these deals have to be set against the damage that's been done by the adverse effects on our trade with our principal market. Uh, I mean... <laughs> Whenever you see these deals being announced, whether it's Australia or Japan, whatever it is, figures are given, tiny, tiny little figures that are said to be the potential benefit to the British market. What they should constantly do is to report how much loss of trade we are going to suffer because we've left or severed our relationship with our European market. Um, so You've always been a glass half full look, sort of person. No, the glass is, is in my view, self-evidently uh, less full now than it would have been if we'd remained in the European Union. But let me, let me say this, um, and, and I was struck by the Daily Telegraph article about the, how, how to get Britain moving again. I think that there are ways in which post-COVID and post-Brexit we could generate a much more dynamic British economy. And that is to actually uh, pursue a policy of the devolution, building uh, the strengths on the local economies, create proper leadership in those local economies, and switch power from the baronies of Whitehall to the local economies where a great deal of the wealth is made. And the government, in my view, they, they, they know all these arguments but actually, despite having made quite clear promises to do things along those lines, they're not doing it, and that is culpable. Uh, well, Lord Heseltine, I want to say thank you so much for coming on. It's always good to actually discuss these things, and you're a man of great stature, and it's been an honour to be able to talk about Brexit with you on Independence Day. Happy Brexit. Oh, you just threw that in. I did. Right, let's, uh, <laughs> let's just show you uh, some of uh, the top Brexit bonuses that uh, perhaps are the benefit of what's happening. Brexit gives us a blank canvas on which we can draft the future of our own country on our own terms. That's right. We can now make our own trade deals, opening up the UK to a global marketplace on our own terms. That means that what we decide in those trade deals with other countries is good for our economy and our industries and not necessarily what is a compromise with 27 other nations. We're also more nimble in how we respond to recovering from COVID, for example, something that is seen as a huge success in terms of our, tr our vaccination program. Yeah, and our world-leading universities can now offer an exchange program internationally. And we can also invest heavily in things like technology and have a new era of innovation, cutting things like taxation for companies who want to invest in robotics and build big technology parks. Also, research in universities will now be without the strictures of EU regulation, meaning that we can innovate even more. Well, let's return to Kate Howey, a uh, big Brexit supporter. Um, you heard Lord Heseltine there expressing a view that you know we have lost an awful lot by leaving the EU and that's going to be very tough to recover from. I just don't see it like Lord Heseltine. Um, I mean he's been saying that that we would do that and he's been saying it for the last sort of six or seven years. Um, 
but the reality is we are actually, our, our uh, businesses are now looking outside the European Union to get that extra trade. And I haven't seen anything that, uh, that Brexit has done that is going to stop people selling what they're already selling to the European Union to continue selling it. Um, you know, and I think, I, I mean, I understand Lord Heselton. He, he, he is a deeply, deeply committed Europhile, and he hates the fact that we voted to leave. And, you know, it will take a while before people like Lord Heseltine really even want to engage with the positive things. And, and so I, I, I would just say that, you know, people like Lord Heseltine, you know, perhaps in 41 years again, when it was 41 years from we first joined that we got our referendum well, to I, leave. I wanted, I, I wanted to pick up on that because mm -hmm. what we joined was a trading bloc. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who voted leave, it wasn't about trade. It was about where it was going as yep. a political organization, that there was talk of a European army, that there was talk of, of many things mm -hmm. that people felt uncomfortable with, nothing to do with trade. Yeah. That was the, uh, the, the, the byproduct, if you like, of something uh, something else. And yes, of course, trade has, has suffered. Yeah. It has suffered. Nobody can deny that. But in the long run, the hope is that we that get we'll over that. And of course, the European Union sort of project from the very beginning of the common market, while it wasn't made very uh, sort of noisy and loud, was really all about moving towards a closer federal type of Europe. And that's what was gradually happening. And yes, um, you know, I find it strange that the European Union needed a flag, that they needed uh, an anthem, that they needed all these things as if they were a state. And we've now actually, this country's actually given the European Union an ambassadorial status. You know, I wouldn't have personally done that, but <laughs> I suppose it helps to keep our friends happy in, in, in the EU. Well, oh, you're calling them our friends, yeah, you well, see. Yeah, I'm, I'm being cynical. No, but seriously, uh, you know, th that people saw that, that more and more it was changing our relationship. And i tell you another thing that I think will happen now. Our civil service, you know, who are renowned all over the world, have for many years become more and more reliant on Brussels. Everything had to be checked with Brussels. You know, that was the excuse that was made for all sorts of things. Oh, Brussels, we can't do it. They can't do that anymore. You know, there is now going to be much more genuine accountability and our civil service is going to have to realize that they're on their own feet now they have to yes we want to cooperate with all you know all countries in the world not just countries in the former um, eu that we were in but that is going to change the whole issue i think the whole kind of is it like a catalyst in the country to recognizing that we can do things you know we don't need 27 other countries to tell us and to get the bureaucracy we need to get rid of a lot of the bureaucracy, and that's one thing you asked me earlier. I mean, I do think a lot of the red tape that we took in in order to let, um, you know, to our own laws, now we need to be going through that and getting rid of an awful lot of it. People don't realise, do they, as well, that a lot of that red tape is as a result of lobbying by big multinational companies, and actually Brussels has been a very useful one-stop shop for a corporate cartel to make demands, mm. and actually I think this has had an effect, a ripple effect on the developing world as well. Yes, and the small businesses who really, most of our, you know, majority of our small businesses in this country had really no relationship with the EU, don't trade with them, and yet they find themselves bound by a kind of cartel who wanted to stop, basically wanted to stop competition. So I, I just see it as a win-win, but I think most of all I see it as a win for all those people, you know, who were, de who were told they were racist, who were told that they were xenophobic, who were told, you know, that you don't understand, you know, that sort of patronizing attitude that came from many of my colleagues in the House of Commons during the whole campaign and afterwards. And I'm just pleased for those people that I saw when I did those rallies all over the country and who would come up to me and say, oh, I'm so pleased there's a Labour MP here because we do feel Labour has left us. And uh, I feel delighted for them today. Oh, five right. years on. I wish you could stay all day and talk about only this. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure, <laughs> Kate. Such a pleasure. And really, thank you, so thank you for coming in. Thank, thank you. Very, thank you.